just introduce myself. I've been in the industry for about 30 years. You know, I started off as an AutoCAD instructor, and I, I've had CAD in my blood all those years. And I've worked with IBM Tririga for 10 years or so, and I'm a certified application developer. I've worked with Peregrine Systems, SpanFM, Archibus going way back. And I'm also a certified iOffice implementation specialist. And I retired or semi-retired in January of last year, 2022. By happenstance, I met up with Nick Springate, who I've known for 30 years or more. And he introduced me to uh, what they're working on, IDN Space and Work. And it frankly brought me out of retirement. I was so excited about this product and I'm excited to share it with you today. What we're looking at here, if you can see my screen, it's a uh, vision of our website and uh, spaceandwork.net. And we'll come back to this in a moment, but the message here is get managing your facilities in minutes, not months. And we are gonna zip over to our software demonstration here. What we're looking at is our space dashboard of our IDN Space and Work product. So it's based on your role. So if I'm a space manager, this is the view that I could be looking at. If I'm a work manager, I'm just gonna click on this menu option at the top and you can see we've got work, property, administration. I'll just click on our work management dashboard. And you can see if I'm a work manager, I'm gonna see a, a different view, different widgets. We call these graphs on the corners here to be widgets and we, those are completely customizable. I'm just gonna go back to our space dashboard. And before I get into the actual demonstration of how to upload drawings and so forth, I'm just gonna give you a orientation, a, a walkthrough of the system to give you some sort of context. What we're looking at here again, I'm the space manager. So we've got categorization, status, which refers to whether a space is available, occupiable, reservable buildings we next we have like assigned seating or a list of all people that are contacts in the system we have background data we have reports we have find options for finding a person finding a space reserving a space and managing visitors so what we're going to look at we're going to go into our buildings list and just again we're just kind of navigate through here's a list of all the buildings in our sample organization we don't have to look at it in this fashion. We call this a card view or maybe a tile view. If you're more used to a list view, we can just do it like this. And you can see it's broken down by the type of building that it might be. If you're a large organizations with many facilities, you can say, well, where are all of our facilities? We have a map view that comes up here and I can hover over a particular space. I can click on that and it'll bring up some details here. I can look at a list of all the spaces that are in that particular building that I just picked. Or if I want more details, I can just go in and click on the details of this particular building. And here you can see it's called uh, Matterport Tower. It's in Chicago. There's this ninth floor. So we don't occupy the entire building. We're only on the ninth floor. We can see that it has uh, uh, 1,400 square feet of underutilized space. But that's a small view. We can come in here and we can just dive directly into the floor plan and have a look at it. And I can use my mouse wheel to sort of zoom in here. And again, this is just sort of our orientation. I'll give you an introduction to this particular interface. On the left-hand side, we've got tools such as downloading a file, printing a file, linking a drawing file. We've got some measurement tools here for uh, measuring distances, measuring areas on a particular floor plan. And then importantly, we've got these categorization views. So occupancy, surface, flooring, and that sort of thing. Categorization, what type of space it is. I'm just mousing over these things. I'm not clicking on them as yet. Status, organizations, and equipment, and work orders down here. So you can see right now we're defaulting to occupancy. Up here at the top, it says occupancy. And uh, on the upper right here, you can see this is our little legend of what we've got in this particular case. If I click on categorization, you see the view changes. 
the legend changes. So we've got circulation space, classrooms, laboratory space. If I click on organizations, we don't have any organizations assigned at this point. We can click on status. In this case, we have this one particular unit. And I'll go back to surfaces here. And you can see they've got carpeting, we've got carpet tile, ceramic tile, concrete. And this is good if you're managing custodial contracts or something. Someone says, well, how many square feet of carpet do you have? Here I can click on an individual space and it'll up on the upper right, it'll show me that this is carpet tile, this is space number 907. If I'm uh, curious as to what other details are in this space, we can have that here and I'll just go back. And we've got this option called 3D view. So I'm clicked on this space. And if I click on 3D view, it's actually gonna take me into that space. And this is not just an image, this is a dynamic image. I can walk around, I can zoom in. And this is with a tool called Matterport. So we have Matterport integration with our tool here. Okay, I'm gonna back out and go back to our buildings list. And we are going to look for, going to go back to our tile view. We're going to come to our uh, commons building. Again, we're just giving you some, uh, a walkthrough. We're going to go to show details. So if I'm a building manager or space manager, this is our landing point for a particular building. So you can see at a glance, we've got multiple floors here. We've got uh, a roof and we've even got an exterior floor plan, like a site plan. Up at the top here, just for your, we've got the ability to edit additional details about this particular building. So if we're interested in its address, its long, latitude, longitude, the date it was built and so forth, we can dive into those details here. Also, we can see what documents are associated with it, all the spaces in this particular building, you know, it's all listed here. As a, you can export that to Excel if you need to. And we've got reports. You can have a total space summary report just for this building. And what we've got here is a PDF output of a building summary space report that you can get. Here we go. So at the upper left, you can see there's a seven page report. So we're looking at page one of seven. It's a space summary. As we page through this report, you can print this out to a PDF or to export it and email it to someone. Here, this is exactly what you'd see. You've got a nice legend here at the bottom. It tells you that we've got one overutilized space here. And uh, just quickly page through. Each floor of this building is rendered. And here's our site plan, as you can see. And we've got a roof plan. So that's sort of a report, a building-specific report. And you can have global reports, all buildings in your portfolio as well. Quickly here, we've got you see occupancy status is currently highlighted. So it's showing us the occupancy on each floor of this building. If I toggle over to categories, now you can see all the categories. We've got 566 square feet of building services on this floor and so forth. And again, we can dive in to look at that floor plan and get additional details. We can zoom in. We can print, if I go to our print option here, we can print to PDF, we can print to PNG, we can export to DWG if you wish. And importantly, we can print to architectural E, D, every paper size that you can imagine. Here we'll just say 11 by 17, uh, and I'll just go to print. And what we're printing here is an occupancy plan, downloads our PDF here, I'll bring that up. And if you're gonna email this to somebody in your organization, here it is. It's got occupancy details, capacity overutilized. We can zoom in and you can see you've got people's actually their names in the spaces. And as I zoom in with more detail, you can, this is what we call vector-based PDF. So even you can see the hatch patterns are nicely rendering as we zoom in and we've got the people's names and so forth. So you can print this out and send it to somebody and it's just fabulous. We'll come back here and let's say uh, we are 
working on a different, what we're looking at here is our desktop view. And if uh, you're walking through the building with your phone or an iPad or something like that, I'm just going to quickly emulate what that looks like using a F12 key here. So if you're walking through your facility with your iPhone or your Android phone or any device that can render a web page, basically, you can the, the system automatically recognizes what device you're using, and the, the dashboard then reorganizes itself. We still have our widgets here. If we're looking to say we're looking for somebody, I'm look, I, I showed up at the facility and I'm looking for Vaughn Jones, and I'm not sure exactly where he is, so I can just click on this find person option. And here, a little simple form comes up, and I'm going to say I'm looking for Mr. Jones, and I'll just do a quick search. And it finds two people in this case. We've got Bill and Vaughn. I'm interested in finding Vaughn. So it brings up his personal details. And if I just come down here, you can see exactly where Vaughn Jones is sitting. Nice, handy little tool. So we're back to our dashboard, and I'm going to zip over to our work management dashboard. Right? So I'm changing roles here. Our work dashboard, as opposed to our space dashboard. So if I'm looking for a particular piece of equipment, I can also rotate this. So it's, looks So what I'm demonstrating here essentially is that whether you're working at a desktop or you're a mobile user, you don't have to switch applications. You don't have a UX interface to you know some other IWMS sort of thing. Well, this is the same application running on the any device, and it's also optimized so that if you're you know, poking with your finger instead of a mouse, you know, you can have these larger tile type views, or if you wish, you can still go to a list view and see all your equipment and that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna exit out of here and I go back to our desktop because it's a little bit easier to, for the demonstration. And what we're looking at here is a list of equipment because we do our, we do preventative maintenance and so forth. And I'm just gonna click on this particular piece of equipment here. It's an AED device. So you can see there's an image of it. It's got, you know, if there's any work orders against it, if there's any PMs. And importantly, because we are a space and work centric, space centric application, everything comes down to space. So where is this device? Well, it's in room 132 in the downtown campus. Okay. Well, let's show that on the floor plan. Everybody's visual, right? Okay. That AED is located in this uh, kitchen on this particular building. So that's pretty cool. Easy to find. While we're here in this uh, equipment view, we can do a filter or we can do an explicit search. I'm looking for an electrical panel. Right? We have thousands and thousands of pieces of equipment. You can easily dis distill it down to just a couple of records. And this is the panel that I'm interested in. So I'm going to view and edit that. And up comes this equipment record, like we saw with the AED device just earlier. There's an image of the panel. It's got a location on a floor plan. So that panel is located somewhere in this space, D130. But if we want to go further, I mentioned our Matterport integration. We can say, well, what does that actually look like in the space? Like, where is that panel in that space? And here it is right here. So you can say, there's our electrical panel. And again, we've got a dynamic view. You can see where is that panel in the context of this space, right? So this is really quite a very, you might have seen this in real estate applications, you know, people look at houses and so forth. But here we can also tag other, uh, other devices in the, uh, in the building, right? So you, you can imagine if you've never been in this building before, you can now almost virtually be there. Okay, so that's sort of our introduction to the space and work interface. And again, I'm really excited about this because it's just so easy to use. Uh, before we go a bit further, you can see we have these widgets, we call them these graphs on the corner of each of these dashboards. And depending on your role, you will have buttons that you, uh, this may be configured differently depending on your role, different options. But if you wanna change these reports dynamically, 
I can just click on this corner and we can pick from a list of other dynamic reports. So let's say I would like to see this one instead on my dashboard. I'll just click that and say, okay. And now you can see that that report is now on my dashboard. And it's not just a static report. You can see as I mouse over these items, it gives me details. I come over here and you can say, well, we have 352 underutilized spaces. So these widgets are not just images, they are dynamic. Okay, so enough of that. We are now gonna get into the actual demo portion of the event, and I'm gonna show you how to get managing your facilities in minutes, not months. Anecdotally, you know, you hear of these projects that take one or two years to get up to speed uh, with these complex IWMS systems. And like Nick said, we are not an SAP. We are a QuickBooks, if you wanna use that sort of metaphor. This is, you can, you've got simple facilities and you've got all your drawings in place, you can get up to up and running very quickly. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on our buildings button and we are going to come to this riverfront center because we've just added a new floor to this building, let's say, and I'm gonna come in here and look at our details. Before we sort of get started here, I'm just gonna pause and show or, and explain to you what I'm about to show you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a floor record in a building, and then we're gonna link a drawing file, a DWG file to that floor. And once that's linked in, we're gonna just quickly go in and show you how you can categorize space. It's an office, it's a storage room. How to assign surfaces. Does it have carpeting? Does it have ceramic tile? Assigns people. You know, is Bob sitting in this room and Joe sitting in that room? You know, what's the surface? What's the uh, organization? Is that they work for, and you can assign all of those details to individual spaces. And uh, then finally, we're gonna print out some reports and submit a service request. So over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna load a floor plan, categorize space, assign people, and run a service request against that. So let's get started. So here we have our Riverfront Center. I'm gonna create a new floor with this option here. And our floor code, we'll call it the fourth floor because that's what we're bringing in. So we just have two required fields here, the fourth floor ID and name. We're gonna save that, confirms it. And you can see this fourth floor record shows up here in our details. I'm, and we don't see an image of that, of course, because we haven't linked it yet. So I'll just click on this little chevron on the uh, right side, and we're gonna click on our floor plan option. And over here on the left, it's currently showing us one of the uh, current floors. I'm going to navigate to our fourth floor, which is the one that we just created. And you can say, you can see that it says the specified drawing does not exist. That's what we're gonna do next. We've got, again, with the interface here, it's, I think it's very user-friendly. We have these icons instead of words. You can mouse over it and tells you what you can do with it. These are our tools. And we've got our, you can mouse over again to see what each of these do. We're gonna link our floor plan. So this link button is what I'm gonna click. On the right-hand side, it's expecting us to upload a file called 03404, which is the fourth floor of this particular building. I'm gonna click on our navigation, and here is our 03404 floor plan. This is a DWG file, and I'm gonna bring that in, and it reads it. And again, I can use my mouse wheel to zoom right in here and have a look at it. And for those that are, those of you on the call that are familiar with uh, AutoCAD and facilities management tools, each of these rectangles is a polyline or a closed boundary. And the number inside that is the room identifier. You can see in this case, the room identifier is kind of obscured by the equipment symbols in that space. So that's uh, what our floor plan looks like. We've also got that floor plan open up here in a CAD software called DraftSite. So for those of you that are familiar with AutoCAD or other CAD software tools, you'll recognize this. And one important note I wanna make here is that unlike 
other IWMS systems, you do not need any kind of AutoCAD plugin. You don't need to use AutoCAD. You can use DraftSite. You can use AutoCAD LT. You can use any CAD software you want as long as it can save a DWG file. And then we can work with that. So that's, you know, you don't have to purchase uh, any other CAD software in order to use our system. So what we're going to do now, just to get back on track, we're loading this floor plan. We just, we've got some options here on the upper right. We've just selected this plan, and we can do a floor link. And I'm just going to click on this link button. And it's going to read the polylines that are on the exterior of this plan. And it reports us, we've got 20,949 square feet. That's really cool. OK, so that all looks good. What about the spaces? I can click on the spaces template here. And I can click on our link button. And it's going to read all the spaces on this plan. And everything looks pretty good, except for these two spaces right here that are colored orange or red. And uh, if you look at our legend, it says we've got 205 spaces that are good. And we got two duplicates. So that's telling us that we have duplicate room IDs in those spaces. And we don't want to bring that in with that error. So we can fix that. And I'm just going to zip back over to our drawing file here. And I'm going to zoom into that spot. And you can see, oh, we have got two spaces here with the same number. That's obviously a problem. I'm going to click on one of these room numbers here and come over here and change that to what it's supposed to be. 574. And we'll just save our drawing. Say so yes. That drawing's been updated. And now I'm going to reselect that file because it's going to uh, reread it. And we come in here now, we're going to uh, have another look at it. We click on our spaces link. And you can see everything looks good now. There's no errors, there's no uh, duplicate text. And we could just commit this right now if we wanted to. But we've got a couple other tools that I want to show you. Before you load this drawing, we can prepare it. So where is this drawing coming from? I'm going to click on this prep option here. This brings us into a different viewing editor. And we've got three basic tools here. We've got third party layers. So we've got none, which means this is a brand new drawing. It's got the IDN layers already in place. We don't have to do any layer management. But what if this is coming in from Archimus? What if it's coming in from Centerstone, Tririga, iOffice? We've got tools that will manage all of that. So you don't have to be a CAD expert. You don't have to go into CAD and change all the layers to whatever software you're working with. We can just automatically process that for you. So if, let's say, you're coming in from uh, iOffice, it will read that drawing. It'll understand the layers that iOffice uses. It'll convert them to the IDN layers, if you wish, right? So it, it will it will understand where you're coming from. And part of our compatible, affordable, friendly mobile message is compatibility. You know, we're compatible with uh, our competitors, if you will, right? So going along, we have as, uh, the next section here is asset text preparation. So if I zoom in here, you can see that the room numbers are quite large. They're in the middle of the space. In this case here, it's being obscured. So uh, we've got this option here to move text, and not just move the text, we can resize it. So the text can be proportional to the size of the space. So if you've got some tiny little janitor's closet, you know, the, the room number will be proportionally sized. And then the other options we have down here, we can create IDN layers, we can hide hatches. I'm just gonna unselect all of these because our drawing is uh, coming in with IDN layers. But we're going to do the move tax. So I'm just going to click on this prepare drawing option. So what it's doing now, it's reading that drawing file, reading all the text, moving that text, resizing it. And the reason we're doing this is it just makes the drawing a lot more manageable, actually. And here we go. We're all prepared. And I'm going to zoom right back into that equipment room. And you can see what's happened here. It's moved that text to the lower left corner. It's no longer obscured. Over here, you can see the 
all the text has been moved. So that's what the drawing preparation tool does for us. And now we're going to do the link. Okay, so we're going to click on our floor. We're going to click on the link option. Everything looks good. And we're going to commit those changes. So this is the first time that we've actually created any data really in the database because we've prep, we've, uh, we've analyzed the drawing, we've uh, prepared the drawing, and now we're committing it to our database. And next step is to click on our spaces template. We'll do our link. There's all our spaces. All the, these are coming into the database, and we're going to create 200 new, 207 new space, and we're going to commit those changes now. Cool. And there we are. I'm going to refresh this. And now you can see there's our fourth floor with the image. And if you click on link space, you can see all the spaces that are linked. We've got 207 spaces in total on that floor. The entire building has 400 and, or sorry, 43,000 square feet. We can come in and have a look at that floor that we just linked. Okay, so we've got our drawing link. What do we do now? I'm zooming in with my mouse wheel, as you can see. We've got a number of tools on the side here. We've got occupancy, we've got surfaces. So let's start with surfaces. We're going to walk through, virtually walk through our building. We're coming through with a tablet, let's say, and we click on this space. And you can see on the right hand side here, it says uh, there's no surface currently assigned. I can click on this button and I could say, well, that space has carpet. And of course, that list of flooring, furnished flooring. Surface records is completely modifiable. I'm going to save that. And you'll see the color changes uh, accordingly. I can also select multiple spaces. So instead of just selecting one at a time, I can hold down the shift key and I can uh, do a multi select like this. And it says you've got eight records selected. So I can take them all and, in this case, categorize them. I can say they are offices, they are cubicles. I can say they have a assignable status. We can put people in those spaces. They all have carpet in this case. And if, if they all work for the same organization, we can come in and uh, select that as well. They may work for the this department and this division sort of thing and hit save. So as you're doing your space survey, as you're walking through the facility, you can, update the details like that. You can see I clicked on this categorization button and we have a legend button over here. So it says we've got currently 288 square feet of office space, or in this case cubicles. If we click on our organization, we can say, oh, there's the uh, division department we just assigned to those spaces. Okay, moving along, what about people? As you're doing your walkthrough, you want to assign people to spaces. We'll go to our chair. You can click on this chair. It talks about occupancy. And you'll see that displays this people button here, list of individuals who need to be assigned to spaces. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to bring up a listing here of all the people that currently are in the system. And if you look at our filter options, what it's currently showing us here is all internal contacts, people that do not currently have seating, and they have an active status. Well, I'm going to say, well, we've got some contractors that just joined us. We're going to, they need place to sit. I'm going to click on contractor. I don't really care what their status is. And we make sure that they currently don't have any seating assignment. I'm going to apply that filter. And it comes up with a much shorter list of people that contractors in this case that we can assign seating to. I'm going to click on Danny Ocean here. When I click on his name, Right at the top, it says assign Danny Ocean. It's waiting for me to pick a space. I'm going to put Danny right there. And you can see it, his name pops up. And as I zoom in, zoom out, it resizes the text accordingly. So it makes it easy to visualize. And I can just keep going along like that. I can click on Linus, pop him in there. And we can get Frank, put Frank over here. And it's just as that easy, just drag and drop people. Now they are assigned to that space. 
come back to our tools, if I click on that space now, you can see it shows Danny Ocean that he's there. I can view edit that particular individual's personnel record. So I can see the organization they work for, their space assignment, and so forth. And it's been updated. And I can come here and look at the full edit form for the space itself. So what is the details of this space? Here's the area, the division organization, the type of category and type of space. And as you can see, it shows us Danny Ocean is assigned to that. And if there's options here to unassign that person. And of course, you can add new people to the spaces here by using this assigned personnel button. OK, so as we're doing our space walkthrough, we're identifying people, surfaces, organizations, et cetera. What about if we come across a piece of equipment that we want to identify? So I'm going to click on this equipment button over here on the left. And it's going to change to the equipment mode. And up at the top here, it says click on an equipment symbol, or we can actually add new equipment symbols. So let's say there's a fire extinguisher that we've noticed in this particular space, and we want to make note of that. We could go to list of symbols here. I can click on the plus sign, and then I can come in here and I can drop that fire extinguisher symbol, sorry, on our drawing. But that's kind of big, so I can click on that and I can change the scale of it, make it say smaller. I can move it so I can say, well, it's actually over here. Change the color and so forth. There it is. So now, that symbol is placed, I can click on it. And you can see, I can go to the full edit form. So as I'm walking through the facility, I can say, I can identify particular pieces of equipment that I want to manage. I can scan the barcode. If I was using my mobile device here, I could, if the device had a barcode, I could capture that. I could also select the space that it's sitting in. I can say, well, it's in this particular space. And we can save that as well. So that's uh, how we can get uh, equipment quickly into the system. And lastly, we're going to uh, look at our service request option. So let's say as you're walking through this space, you notice that there's a leak or there's some sort of uh, issue that needs to be repaired. I can click on this hard hat guy here. And I can click on a space. And at the top, again, it says service requests. Click on a space, and I've got this option up here. It says service request. I can quickly open up a quick service request. I can say, well, what's the problem? <clears throat> it's a custodial issue. The uh, trash all over the place. I want to empty that trash out. And if you want to take a picture of it, I don't have a camera associated here, but if I had a picture that was to select here, I could do that and then just hit uh, submit. I could take a photo of the trash situation and, and attach it to the work order kind of thing. OK, and then once we've got that mode, I can click on the hard hat and I can see as a, as a work manager where there are work requests in the system. Uh, so if, I'm, if I was the uh, space planner, and as I was walking through and I saw that request, I created that request, I come in here as the work manager now, and I can say, oh, there's a work request in this space. What is it? I can click on that space. Maybe I have to do a refresh here. So I click on that space. It shows me the work request that's currently there. I can go in and I can view the details of it. And if I say, okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to approve this work request, every time you change status, it's going to want to know little bit of detail about what happened there. I can go and print this work order out uh, if I wish. At the bottom here we have a print option and I want to send this off to a tradesperson to to fulfill this work request. Here we got a two-page work order that we can either print out or email to the tradesperson. It could be an outside contractor and they'll here's the basic details and then page two actually shows you where that location is on a floor plan. You can imagine someone who's not familiar with the floor plan. Where is this room? Here it is, We're quickly, no problem. And of course, you can display this on your mobile device as well. 
Okay, well, I don't know how long that took. That was about half an hour. So here we are, managing from nothing to service requests, people assignments, all in minutes, not months, and getting back to our website here. If you want to learn more, we have our spaceandwork.net product site. Click on this Learn How button, and here we have a series of videos and how to get up and running. Link your drawings, upload your company data. One thing we didn't show is you can, we have data import tools. You can upload all your company data from your existing systems or Excel spreadsheets and get up and running quickly. Uh, we've also got videos. Just quickly here, every single one of these is a video. So if you want to know how to do move management using our software, you can come in here and watch a short video on how to do move management. Well, Ken, that was amazing. You certainly demonstrated how easy it is to get started managing a facility in minutes, not months. Thanks for watching, everyone.